Welcome to Electro Online. In this playlist, we're going to show you again how to manipulate the energy conservation equation. But in this case, we have work put into the system because you can see that we have a force acting on mass right here, we have a force acting on it here, and we have a force acting on it there over a particular distance. So what we're trying to find is what is the final velocity of the system after the force has acting on the object over a particular distance. So here you can see that we have work put into the system, which is force times distance. No initial potential energy and no initial kinetic energy. We have no final potential energy because no height is gained, but we do have final kinetic energy. And so therefore, we have, when we bring the two across over here, two times force times distance equals m times v squared. Solve that for v squared. Take the square root of both sides, and so the final velocity will be equal to the square root of twice the force times the distance traveled divided by the mass. Let's say we do the same problem again, but now there is friction involved. Notice there was no friction over there. So what is different now, the equation is exactly the same. The work put into the system with no initial potential or kinetic energy results in no final potential energy because no height is gained, some final kinetic energy plus some energy lost due to the friction, which is the friction force times the distance traveled, the work done to overcome friction. And so now what we have is F times D is equal to 1 half mv squared plus, now the friction force is obtained by noticing we have the weight pulling down, we have the normal force of the surface pushing back up, which is equal to the weight, and then the friction force is defined as the normal force, mg times mu. So in this case, the friction force is mg mu times the distance traveled. We have to add that on the right side of the equation. So now we solve for 1 half mv squared, so we take this and move to the other side, it becomes negative. Then we multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by m, take the square root, and you have the final velocity. I guess we could put sub f there, final velocity, is going to be equal to 2fd minus this term right here, 2mg mu times d over m. Notice that this portion of the answer is exactly the same what we had before, and so this is subtracted from the original answer because we lose some energy by, overcome, by overcoming the friction, by doing work to overcome the friction. Over here we have an example now where we actually push an object up a slope. Again, let's start out by mu is being equal to zero. So now we know that we gain some height, and the height can be calculated to be the distance traveled d times the sine of the angle theta, because h is opposite to the angle. So notice now that we still have work put into the system, force times distance, no initial potential energy, no initial kinetic energy, but we now have final potential energy, mgh, which of course can be written as mg times d sine theta, and we have some final kinetic energy. So solving for v final, we move mgh to the other side, so now we have 1 half, one half mv squared is equal to force times distance minus mgh, which is mg times d sine theta. Multiplying both sides by 2, dividing both sides by m, notice that we end up with this equation right here, and notice that this portion right here is still equal to 2fd over m, which is what we have over there and there, but now we also have to account for the additional potential energy gained, 2mgd sine theta divided by m, take the square root of that, and that is how the velocity final has changed if we hadn't gained any height. No height gained, we get back what we have over there. No friction, we get back what we have over there. And that is how it's done.